Good morning, folks. Thank you for joining me this morning. We're going to be in Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Um, we had a good turnout at the support for the local pregnancy resource clinic. Um, 88000 about $88,000 was raised. We're, uh, it was a little short of their goal of 110000 but uh, there was a lot of people participated, even though it was raining and cold that day. Um, in the PRC 5K run, the walk and the bicycle ride, the 10-mile bicycle ride as well. So thank you all for supporting that, and we just pray that for Jenny and the whole team at uh, the, the State College Pregnancy Resource Clinic, uh, that God would continue to lead them and guide them and to be a help and blessing to many people. So uh, we're in Ecclesiastes chapter 8. I'm going to read through it, and then we'll discuss it. Who is like the wise, and who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face shine, and the hardness of his face is changed. I say, keep the king's command because of God's oath to him. Do not uh, hasty to go, be not hasty to go from his presence. Do not take your stand in an evil cause, for he does whatever he pleases. For the word of the king is supreme. And who may say to him, what are you doing? Whoever keeps a command will know no evil thing. And the wise heart will know the proper time and the just way. For there is a time and a way for everything although man's trouble lies heavy on him. For he does not know what it is to be, for who can tell him how it will be? No man has power to retain the spirit or power over the day of death. There is no discharge from, the, from war, nor will wickedness deliver those who are given to it. All this I observe while applying my heart to all that is done under the sun, when man had power over man to his hurt." Then I saw the wicked buried. They used to go in and out of the holy place and were praised in the city where they had done such things. This also is vanity, because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily. The heart of children of man is fully set to do evil. Though a sinner does evil a hundred times and prolongs his life, yet I know that it will be well with those who fear God because they fear they fear before him. But it will not be well for the wicked, neither will he prolong his days like a shadow because he does not fear before God. There is a vanity that takes place on earth, that there are righteous people to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked, and there are wicked people to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity, and I commend joy for man uh, has no good thing under the sun but to eat and drink and be joyful. For this will go with him in his toil through the days of his life that God has given him under the sun. When I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done on earth, how neither day nor night do one's eyes see sleep, then I saw all the work of God that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. However much man may toil in seeking, he will not find it out. Even though a wise man claims to know, he cannot find it out. All right, let's pray. Lord of grace and mercy, thank you for this time together to reflect on your word that has been passed down to us. Uh, help us to apply this to our life. Um, help us to see the world through your eyes. Help us to be a blessing to others, to serve others as you have served and loved us. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. So let's kind of let's dig into this. This, uh, this first part kind of um, takes a look at our relationship with those in authority. And so uh, he says in verse 1, a man's wisdom makes his face shine and the hardness of his face is changed. In other words, it's like, Sometimes we say the light, the light is going on. You've, you've kind of the light bulb is going on. It's like, bing. Okay, I understand what's going on here, and that changes the demeanor of a person's face from uh, struggling with trying to get an understanding of something to having that understanding and and just a weight lifted off of that person. But then he kind of turns to in verse two. Um, 
keeping um, keep the king's command. Uh, don't uh, don't take your stand in an evil cause. In other words, you know, don't uh, don't uh, align yourself with those who uh, are apt to do evil. And it says the word of the uh, the king is supreme. Um, don't be hasty to go from his presence. In other words, in the ancient days, unless you were called to be in the king's presence or you were asked to be dismissed from his presence, if you went, came and went on your own accord, um, that wouldn't go well for you. It could even mean up to death. So what does this mean for us uh, today in our relationship with authority around us? There are many things that uh, people in authority, our government allows that is against the will of God. Um, and so what does that mean for the Christian as we are living out our life? Well, uh, from a biblical perspective, we are to submit to the governing authorities. There is a caveat to that. Um, you know, no government is perfect. Uh, all governments have flaws. All governments will support things that are against the, uh, the Christian faith. Um, so how do we live that out as Christians? Well, if we are not forced to participate in the evil and we still have a voice within the society in which we live, then we're to go about peaceably. We can uh, argue and, and reason in the public square and we can vote. Uh, for for candidates that more closely align with our Christian faith. Um, but there is no, again, there is no perfect uh, government out there. There's no perf perfect solution. So uh, as long as I am not forced to participate in evil, but can have a voice, I should be submitting to the authority around me um, and trying to work for change that is positive in accordance with the word of God. Uh, so that that is our relationship with uh, governing authority around us, even in the midst of obviously many things that are fallen and broken. And so he goes on to say, uh, this is kind of wise advice, um, verse six, for there is a time and a way for everything, although man's trouble lies heavy on him, for he does not know what is to be for who can tell him how it will be? Okay, so there is a right time to approach somebody or somebody in authority, uh, or even somebody that you have a relationship in your within your household or wherever, maybe your spouse. There's a time, a right time to approach things, and there's a wrong time. So you have to have wisdom to discern when is it right for me to address an issue that needs to be addressed? What is the proper setting or the proper scenario in which um, we can have the best chance of having a good outcome to the discussion that is, that is going to happen? Sometimes we forge ahead with things uh, before it is the right time. And so pray to the Lord for that wisdom and discernment on when to discuss it. There's other people who just put things off and put things off and put things off and just try to sweep it under the rug and not deal with it. And then it festers and grows and, and uh, doesn't have a good outcome either. So there is a right time and a right place to have a discussion on issues that need to be resolved. And then he goes on in verses eight, nine to really talk about, we don't know uh, the days that we have, uh, you know, here I am, 61 years old. Does that mean I'm going to be here tomorrow? I don't know. Does it does it mean I'll be here another 20, 30 years? I don't know. It's it's that's up to the Lord. The Lord is in charge. No man has power to retain the spirit or power over the day of death. Now, unfortunately, in our society, there's uh, an increasing movement to think that we can control those things and I'm going to control the day of my death and I'm going to uh, 
you know, some people will say, I'm going to move to a state that allows assisted suicide or something along those lines. And, and uh, I'll decide when the, when the day comes. Um, that is really going against the, the, the will of the Lord. That's not a wise path to take at all. Um, our, our days are in the Lord's hands. Now, there are things that um, in our technology where we sustain life beyond any ability for that life to really function other than mechanically. Uh, and that's a, that's a different scenario. But for somebody to proactively take a, take a, a step to end their life is not within the will of God uh, in there. So let's, uh, let's take each day that God has given to us uh, and enjoy that day and submit everything to the Lord in his grace and his mercy. Um, and um, he says uh, in verse 10, he's kind of is lamenting the fact that I saw, well, he saw the wicked buried. And but during their life, they go in and out of the church or the temple and they receive the accolades of people around them. But God knows what's going on in people's hearts. We may be able to fool other people. We may be able to have, get the accolades of other people, but God knows what's going on in our heart. And so he says, you know, I've seen the wicked buried. And, um, and then, you know, they were, they were, pra they were praised during their time in, on this earth. But he also said there's a uh, there's something that kind of affects the way we see justice. And verse 11, it talks about because the sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily, the heart of the children of man is fully set to do evil. So when an evil occurs and the wheels of justice spin very slowly, um, it can encourage others to do evil. It's like, well, I can get away with this. We're living in some strange, strange times here where uh, in places like in California, they don't even address thing as a criminal uh, event unless it involves something over $900. So people are going in and stealing things uh, right and left. That just encourages other people to to steal things and businesses pull out and how can I do business there and so forth and so on. So govern, the role of government is to restrain evil. And we can see when evil is not restrained, how the hearts of people turn quickly towards evil. And I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do. Uh, I'm gonna do what, uh, what I wanna do and you know, there's no consequence to it. So, uh, a just government uh, will restrain evil. When it doesn't do so, it almost encourages others to join in on the fray and to do evil as well. So there's a, there's a great warning in there for us in our society, especially the direction we're going right now. Um, all right, and he says, uh, they may get away with it in this life, but verse 13, but it will not be well with the wicked neither will he prolong his days like a shadow because he does not fear before God. In other words, God, again, God knows the heart, no matter what a government, civil governing authority is doing or not doing in regards to justice, in the end, God knows everyone's heart. And the only way to cleanse our hearts is through faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, it doesn't come any other way by our own actions, our own efforts, None of us can make ourselves righteous before God. We have to receive the righteousness that God gives to us in and through Jesus Christ and faith in him. And so uh, he goes on in verse um, uh, 14 and re lamenting again what happens sometimes on the earth. Uh, there's a vanity that takes place on earth. In other words, here... Uh, that are that the righteous people to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked. In other words, somebody's living a, a trying to live for the Lord, and yet they are punished 
by the society around them, uh, or in some cases, right, depending on where you're living as a Christian, you're persecuted for your Christian faith, persecuted for following the Lord. And then he says, uh, and there are wicked people to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous. So there's those who are doing wrong, who are praised, given the positions in government, given the positions of the workplace, given the accolades of society. And there's just that kind of injustice that can occur. Uh, so he said, I said, this also is vanity. It's like a chasing after the wind. It's like, what is going on? Why do these things happen? So um, one of the themes in here, and you see him uh, really drive his home uh, at the end, after he says again, he repeats that we should eat and drink and be joyful. In other words, take each day. God has given you this day. Be joyful in it. You're in the Lord's hands. We don't have control over the civil uh, gov governing authorities. We can reason. We can vote. We can uh, speak in the public square. Give thanks for those uh, freedoms and privileges to do so, but um, ultimately there is no heaven on earth. This uh, you know this side of heaven, we we're not going to see a perfect governing place. You're not going to have a utopia here. Um, and then he sums this up uh, in verse 16. When I applied to my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done on earth how neither day nor night do one's eyes sleep. Then I saw all the work of God that man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. However much man may toil in seeking, he will not find it out. Here's the reality for each and every one of us. We're not going to be able to completely understand each and everything that has happened in our life. Just heard the other day um, that uh, from somebody <clears throat> that a bicyclist uh, was was killed. Um, this was from a Christian family, and it was a young lady uh, struck by a truck. How do you, you know, if you're trying to figure it out? every single event that happens in life, every single event that has happened in your life, you drive yourself crazy uh, because we don't know even close to the big picture. I only know my tiny little thing and I don't even, well, here's this, what the scripture says, I don't even know my own heart. Like sometimes I <clears throat> do things that I don't uh, understand. How did that come out of me? So. When we go down a path and we think, we, I got to find a reason for everything. You see people trying to do that. And then they try to uh, come to a conclusion on that. Um, you may think that something happened in your life because you're being punished by God. Well, that's not, that's a false thing. Jesus has taken the punishment upon himself on the cross. Now, there are things that we can do that are stupid and we face the consequences of that. Um, but God, Jesus has taken upon himself the sin of the whole world. So there's no further punishment for sin in that regard because Jesus has taken it upon himself. There is the, the judgment that we face is how we uh, either receive or reject Jesus as our Savior. That is the thing that remains um, because he's already taken upon himself the sin of the world. So the, so the judgment that remains for us is what we do with Jesus. What do you do with Jesus? And so, um, but going down the path of trying to figure out, hey, this thing happened in my life. Why did that happen? Uh, this other thing happened, why did that happen? Sometimes we get insight into that. Sometimes we understand, I can see in retrospect what God was doing there. Didn't see it right at the time, but I can see now what God was doing. Uh, sometimes we get that that insight. Other times, I just have to trust the Lord and turn it over to Him and say, I don't understand it right now. I don't fully comprehend it. But you're sovereign, Lord. I trust you. You're in control. <clears throat> you uh, know the entire 
entirety of the big picture and how everything affects everything else, I can't even begin to wrap my head around that. So I need, I need to turn it over to the Lord and give it into his hands. So I think that's a message that he's leaving to us. Um, is that last sentence there in, in chapter eight, even though a wise man claims to know, he cannot find it out. Yeah. How can we comprehend the mind of God and the interaction interactions of the entire world around us and all the events that are going on in the world around us? We can't wrap our heads around that. We need to trust in God. He is sovereign. He is in control. Um, and we know this. We know this from the scripture that he loves us because he gave his one and only son for us. That I do know. Even when things are are out of spinning out of control in the world around us, I know God's love will not fail. He has proven that. His son went all the way to the cross for us. So let's let's give thanks. Father, we thank you for the gift of your son. We thank you that your love is certain and sure. Uh, that we are forgiven in and through him. And may we trust in him. There's times we don't understand what's going on. We don't understand what has happened in our life or in the lives of others. But Lord God, we, we look to you and help us to lean not upon our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you and trust in you and the completed work of Jesus on the cross. Your love will never fail. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have a great day, everybody.